The FDA has given emergency approval for new COVID vaccines for anyone six months and older with no clinical trials to show for it. Uh, don't worry, though, they say studies suggest that it's effective. Here to break it down with us is Dr. Peter McCullough, who has long since been uh, critical of the COVID vaccines, and he is here to take a look. This is now, thank you for joining us. Um, can yeah. you provide your reaction and just make it clear, this is not the original monovalent vaccine. This is not the bivalent. This is a brand new thing. So why are we getting so little information about it? What do you think of this? I'm not recommending them for my patients at all or for family members. Uh, these are now monovalent vaccines directed against XBB 1.5 Omicron subvariant strain. That strain now is nearly extinct. It's only 3.1% of all strains out there. The current outbreak is driven by the ARIS or EG5 strain, which is uh, most, most prominent. And uh, what we see is a pattern here where the Pfizer and Moderna are constantly behind. By the time they actually develop the RNA code for, uh, you know, for a particular subvariant strain, quickly the virus mutates away into another strain. So these are obsolete. Uh, there are no studies showing they would uh, ever work against EG5. And to my knowledge, they're not any safer. Uh, hmm. We'd expect the same safety profiles we've seen with all the prior vaccines. So our six, I want to talk about the six-month-olds because they're, they're, and this is under the emergency use authorization, Doc, which is, so there's an emergency and among six-month-olds on up. So are you seeing an emergency of COVID among six-month-olds? No, not at all. We're not hearing about it at all in children. Now, I've had some adults with the recent, uh, presumably, ARIS strains, very mild. It's like a common cold and no fever, no pulmonary involvement. We just use the virucidal nasal sprays and gargles, uh, and they work just fine. Uh, just over-the-counter solutions. Haven't had to prescribe any drugs. We don't believe the hospitalization data are adjudicated meaning that uh, the hospital started testing people again and people test positive for many months afterwards. They're not bona fide COVID cases that's, that are winding up in the hospital. No, in fact, uh, just today, the CDC's data shows that even though positivity test rates are increased, death rates are down almost to an unmeasurable number. So that actually verifies what you just said is high numbers of positive cases do not mean high numbers of serious cases. And we don't have any data to show that this is any more serious, do we? No, we don't. In fact, the virus has become progressively more mild. That's great. We know a paper from Clausen and colleagues, Harvard, 97% of us have actually been through the virus uh, clinically or subclinically. And so second infections have a zero risk of hospitalization and death as shown by Chin and colleagues doing internal medicine in October of 2022. So I don't worry about any of my patients being hospitalized with COVID at this point in time. Every so often I'll get somebody who's you know, never had COVID before. They're, it's completely new to them. And uh, I've had to advise on a case recently where we needed to, you know, give a, an oral medicine like ivermectin or doxycycline or prednisone, but it's very rare now. What about this as a pre-existing condition? The idea that if you've had vaccines before, you might now be, be more open to, uh, to getting COVID, that you are now somehow, you have less protection. Can you speak about that, which I find unbelievable? You couldn't say this three years ago. You would have been outlaw, outcasted for this. I know, but you know all the, the um, countries that actually fairly report uh, cases, hospitalizations, deaths by vaccine status, like the UK does, show much higher risks for the vaccinated. So every single vaccine that's taken, there's more and more risk. There was a Cleveland Clinic study by Shretha that showed the same thing. So what's going on is what Wheatley and colleagues predicted in 2021. It's called immune imprinting. The body is being misdirected against antiquated strains. So when the new strain hits, the vaccinated are actually more likely to acquire it and get sicker. Those with no immunity uh, you know, have already faced the virus and against all the components of the virus uh, are in much better shape to actually, you know, manage an infection if they, they have it. It's the strangest thing to keep taking shots every six months, but yet be more and more prone to having the illness the shots are supposed to prevent.
Strange indeed. In fact, I was going over the fact sheet for each of the vaccines, one approved by Moderna, one approved by Pfizer. Both of them say this exactly under the section, what are the benefits of the vaccine, says the duration of protection against COVID-19 is currently unknown. So they don't know. They didn't test. They don't seem to care. And that leaves open the window. What, what I get concerned about is it leaves open a window to make you take another one in four to six months. That's not a question that you we've can respond. Ne- we, yeah, but we've never had any type of vaccine where people who are following the, the narrative right now, they're on their eighth shot. We've never given eight shots of any type of foreign antigen or, or a killed vaccine or live attenuated vaccine, let alone eight injections of a novel genetic code uh, where we, we don't see any evidence that the genetic code is broken down or disposed of in the human body. It's pseudo-urinated, it's, it's modified to be very resistant to human ribonucleases. The spike protein seems to have a very, very long duration of time in the body after it's produced by the vaccines. A recent paper by Brogna and colleagues, shocking, they were able to use mass spec and identify the spike protein truly coming from the vaccine because there's a certain signature, amino acid signature profile on it. And that is widely circulating in the body in their study up to uh, over 180 days in about 50% of people who took the shots. That means 50% of people who took the shots walking around out there. Can you imagine every six months they take a shot? They'll have continually circulating spike protein, the spike protein we know causes damage to tissues, organs, uh, causes blood clotting and the complications all associated with the vaccines. Right, which is not any more conjecture because those things you just said are on the facts sheet now. They weren't originally, but they are now at least on these. um, So you are given this warning, I I, I guess. If that's yeah, it's true. Good. Patients are, are, are fairly worn down. The doctors are. There's over 3,400 papers in the peer-reviewed literature on this, over 800 on myocarditis. Uh, we have uh, compelling evidence from the autopsy studies, uh, papers by Holscher, colleagues on the senior author. Uh, 73.4% of the deaths that occur after the vaccine are truly due to the vaccine. That's now proven. Uh, the benefits are very, very limited theoretical conjectures at this point in time with no clinical data on the BA4, BA5 booster, it completely flopped. Now we have none on the XBB 1.5. It's another flop being introduced into the market on the efficacy side. And I think it'll be more continued safety concerns for people who take them. Fortunately, very few people in America are taking them. Uh, Chris Kingdom in our chat says, how can they approve an emergency vaccine if there's no emergency? And then also Red Spartan on our Rumble chat says, can you ask the doctor about shedding? Yeah. How's it an emergency? And can you talk about the shedding? The emergency use authorization was a mechanism that is completely predicated on having both a, a national emergency and a public health emergency declared by HHS. So the vaccines are government property issued as military countermeasures, essentially. So when the Biden administration on schedule um, dropped the the overall national uh, emergency in Bashara, dropped the public health emergency, we should have been done. We should have been completely done. But yet FDA Commissioner uh, Rob Califf came out and said, nope, the vaccines are going to continue despite the lack of a national emergency. So here the FDA is just enabling this. The question is, who's giving the FDA these orders? The FDA is supposed to be an independent watchdog who's giving the orders. You know, there is great concern, by the way, I'll take all the rest, second part of this about shedding Helene Benoon and and Inserm, former scientist at Inserm, who's probably the most knowledgeable on this. She's pretty convinced the shedding is occurring both of the messenger RNA as well as um, the spike protein. Messenger RNA is circulating in the blood at least a month after the shots. Spike protein, you know, widely circulating for six months or more. So there's got to be a period of time where people take the shots. They theoretically could shed onto someone else with a lot of contact. Uh- well, it, it does seem like the CDC and the FDA are sort of wagging the dog, for lack of a better term, because tomorrow they will meet to decide which populations to recommend. And if they decide that they agree with the FDA, which we have no reason to believe they won't, uh, then taxpayers, the federal government, will pay for these shots. So whether you want it or not, personally, American taxpayers will be paying for it Um 
you know, I know I don't want to ask you to ring in on business deals and government corruption, but do you have a reaction to that? At this point in time, they shouldn't be government property. They, they should be commercial products. People should, you know, should buy them. They should sell, you know, should be bought and sold, uh, commercially approved by insurance companies, unless they enter into the marketplace as commercial products like other biopharmaceuticals. This offering of government property that is, you know, you know, many times brought forward under the setting of, of pressure, coercion, threat of reprisal, mandates, uh, is making people exceedingly uncomfortable. Do, do you know they are government property in every single country in the world? Yeah. That's hard to imagine. Three, yeah. three, you know, three and a half years into the pandemic, that these are still forms of government um, uh, property. They, they should be just commercial products. People should decide to to purchase them uh, should they want them. Yeah, as you write in your book about biopharmaceutical complex, the just like the military industrial complex needs to make its money. I'll get you out of here on this, doctor. You've been great, gracious with your time. We want to allow you to get back to your patients, mm -hmm. which is just turning on television, seeing all of these television doctors that work for like the local NBC affiliates and the local CBS affiliates, and then you have John Pierre at the White House podium and the, you know getting up there telling American people, yeah, you know it's getting scary out there. Go out and take these shots. That's the best thing that you can do right now. Mask up. Go get the shots. What do you say to that? Masks don't work. Uh, many people are now standing up against masks. Many gov many governors, uh, former President Trump, uh, scientifically, they don't work. We should we should forget the masks. But I tell you, the nasal sprays and gargles really work. Everybody should be outfitted with those when they travel. It's good for just general hygiene to avoid uh, common cold, flu uh, anyway. And then uh, the vaccines are not safe, not effective. Uh, and we can't uh, tolerate our government officials making false claims. So Jean-Pierre the other day was saying that the vaccines are the best way to stay safe from hospitalization or death. The vaccines have never been shown to reduce hospitalization and death in any uh, prospective double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trials, nor in any valid observational studies. Recent paper on the preprint server by Michaels and colleagues that have analyzed all the deaths in the Pfizer dossier that occurred after the data cutoff for the very first meeting on December 10th, 2020 by the FDA, actually showed 38 more deaths, majority with Pfizer. There were actually more deaths with Pfizer the moment they were approved by the EUA and the FDA missed it, Pfizer missed it or concealed it. And that pattern of excess death, particularly excess cardiovascular death and excess threefold cardiovascular death that should have actually halted the program right there. Pfizer never should have been approved or on the market. Dr. Peter McCullough, thank you so much for taking some time out this afternoon there at the hospital. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your expertise and insight, as always. Thanks, Doc. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.